This video has been re-uploaded after a few adjustments. Thank you for your patience. Epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. We've talked about remnants of removed roller coasters earlier this year, but there are a lot more examples for another video. These ones in particular have been recycled into something new. Whether it's for decoration or for a whole nother ride, here are 10 recycled roller coaster parts. Number 10, Turbine's Flywheel Launch System at Belgium's Wallaby Belgium, recycled into decoration for Psyche Underground's queue line. Long ago, legendary ride designer Anton Schwarzkopf came up with a revolutionary launch system known as the Flywheel. This system was intended for his famous shuttle loop model. First debuting on Knott's Berry Farm's Montezuma's Revenge, the flywheel launch worked as followed. A motor would spin several large wheels beneath the track. Once hitting the desired rotational speed, a clutch would be released, using the momentum of said wheels to pull a cable. This cable would be hooked up to the ride vehicle, sending passengers zooming forwards. It was truly revolutionary for its time, and eight of these shuttle loop variations would be constructed. In 1982, one of these models would be sold to Wallaby Belgium. It would be named Sirocco, but would later be renamed to Turbine. The same year this coaster was renamed, the entire loop would be enclosed due to several noise complaints from residents. It would operate as Turbine until 2009 when the coaster was unexpectedly closed due to unspecified reasons. Many speculate that the ride had reached the end of its service life, and the flywheel launch system became far too costly to maintain. Fortunately, instead of tearing down the historic attraction, the park decided to give it a massive refurbishment. Five years after closing, the coaster would reopen as Psyche Underground. Among its upgrades were a new train, enclosed spikes to further reduce noise complaints, and a new magnetic launch system. As for the old flywheel system, the park decided to flex their creativity with it instead of chucking it in the scrap heap. At the beginning of Psyche Underground's queue line, you can see the launch system sitting behind bars, illuminated by cool colored lights. It's always nice to see a park update a ride while still honoring its history. Number 9. Ravine Flyer Station at Pennsylvania's Waldemere, recycled into a picnic pavilion. Located in Erie, Pennsylvania, Waldemere is a small park with a big reputation among enthusiasts. Its star attraction is a wooden roller coaster named Ravine Flyer 2. Since 2008, this Gravity Group-made coaster features tons of airtime and an iconic covered hill over Peninsula Drive. The park also has a visually impressive kiddie coaster named Ravine Flyer 3. Now many will look at these names and ask, whatever happened to Ravine Flyer 1? Well, to answer that question, let's travel all the way back to 1922 when the original Ravine Flyer opened. Like Ravine Flyer 2, this wooden coaster also took guests over Peninsula Drive, though this time through a dip instead of a hill. However, just 16 years after its opening, a tragic accident cut this coaster's life short. On August 7th, 1938, the coaster failed to gain enough speed to complete the course and got stuck on the dip over the road. Soon afterwards, a 19-year-old passenger fell to his death from the ride vehicle after a officials say he jumped from his seat out of fright. After an investigation, the coaster was found to be defective, and the whole situation upset the park owner's wife so badly that the decision was made to close Ravine Flyer. Immediately after closing, the ride station was repurposed as a picnic pavilion named Lakeview Grove. While the exterior was changed, the overall structure remained the same. To this day, Pennsylvania families continue to enjoy their saran-wrapped sandwiches and half-melted ice pops where this famous coaster once boarded. Number 8. Assorted Parts of the Cyclone from Canada's Crystal Beach Recycled into parts for the Comet at New York's Great Escape Though Great Escape is known for being a more family-friendly park, its star attraction started out as a ride that was anything but that. Once upon a time, the Comet got its start on Ontario's Crystal Beach Amusement Park. In 1926, famous coaster designer Harry G. Traver introduced his infamous Giant Cyclone Safety Coaster. This was one of the first wooden roller coaster models to use a steel structure. Its use of steel supports was marketed as being easier to construct and impervious to fire and rot. Another thing that set the safety coaster apart was its layout. The course was jam-packed with steep, tight turns and featured almost no sections of straight track. Over the years, this coaster became infamous for how intense it was. The ride was said to be so forceful, passengers would often come off sick, unconscious, or even injured. To mitigate rising insurance costs, a registered nurse was actually stationed near the ride's exit to treat passengers. Unfortunately, despite the ride's marketing, the cyclone would be increasingly costly to maintain. 
This, in addition to the park's falling revenue, led the coaster to close for good in 1946. Not wanting to waste reusable resources, though, the park used some of the ride's discarded wooden steel to build a new coaster named the Comet. After Crystal Beach's closure in 1989, the Comet was auctioned off to Great Escape and would reopen in 1994. Some of the original steel supports were used in the construction. Nowadays, the Comet is considered to be an excellent example of a vintage wooden coaster, and it's likely to stick around for years to come. Number 7. Super Verbal's Corkscrew at Germany's Holiday Park Recycled into Pathway Decor Despite its small coaster lineup, Holiday Park has become a much sought-after destination for enthusiasts. Its star attraction Expedition G-Force is often rated among the best roller coasters on Earth, and can commonly be found on worldwide top 10 lists. However, this coaster wasn't always the park's A-list attraction. In 1979, the park introduced its first steel coaster named Super Verbal. This coaster was made by Dutch manufacturer Vacoma and was the same exact model as the famous corkscrew at Alton Towers. It was the first German roller coaster to go upside down, and for the time, it was revolutionary to local park goers. Its simple layout featured two back-to-back -back corkscrews and a 450-degree helix known as a Bayern curve. It would end up operating at the park for an impressive 34 years before meeting its bitter end in 2013. By then, park officials decided to use the space for a new roller coaster named Skyscream. After attempting to sell Super Verbal, the decision was made to scrap it, but not all of the track was discarded. In honor of the country's first inverting coaster, officials left part of the ride's double corkscrew over a pathway. Coincidentally, the same thing happened with Alton Towers' corkscrew, except at that park it went by the entrance. The track now serves as a decorative archway, and thousands of guests pass under it every year. Though it's gone, this piece of track ensures Super Verbal won't be forgotten anytime soon. Number 6. Robin Hood's Track and Train at the Netherlands Wallaby Holland Recycled into Q decor for Untamed Just like Turbine, Robin Hood was yet another Wallaby coaster that received a major makeover. In 1998, Premier Parks acquired the Wallaby Parks in an attempt to enter the European market. The company would immediately invest in its new acquisitions. For the 2000 season, Wallaby Holland would be renamed Six Flags Holland, and a whopping four new roller coasters would open that year, one of which was of a Coma wooden coaster named Robin Hood. This would be one of only three wooden coasters ever manufactured by Vacoma. Over the years, it would receive a mixed response from enthusiasts, with some enjoying the ride and others finding it too rough, though its rarity as a Vacoma wooden coaster did make it a noteworthy credit. However, in early 2018, the park suddenly announced both the ride's closure and its refurbishment. It would be turned into a steel hybrid coaster by American manufacturer Rocky Mountain Construction. This new attraction named Untamed would debut in 2019, using Robin Hood's original wooden structure and a steel eyebox track. The new layout would feature a faster pace, stronger airtime moments, and a record-breaking five inversions, which is more than any other hybrid coaster. Meanwhile in the queue line, the park paid tribute to the old Robin Hood with a small hill of the original wooden track, complete with a rustic-looking ride car with plants inside it. Park guests actually pass under the old track while waiting in line, and it makes for a nice patch of shade on a hot day. Untamed has since become critically acclaimed by enthusiasts, and not too many people prefer its predecessor. Once again, it's nice to see parks give necessary updates while also honoring their past. Number 5. The Velvet Coaster's Lift Hill at England's Blackpool Pleasure Beach Recycled into Nickelodeon Streak's Lift Hill at the same park. Blackpool Pleasure Beach is one of England's oldest operating amusement parks, and has quite an elaborate history behind it. Since 1896, this park has opened a plethora of memorable historic attractions, and many have come and gone over the years. One of the park's first major roller coasters is the now-defunct Velvet Coaster. Built by William Strickler, this would be the first of three coasters he would build for the park. He would later construct the Virginia Reel and the still-operating Big Dipper. Upon its opening in 1909, the Velvet Coaster was said to be the tallest and fastest roller coaster operating at the park. By 1932, though, the park suddenly decided to replace the coaster with something new. This new ride would be built by Charles Page, who would later go on to build the racing wooden coaster 
Coaster Grand National. Instead of completely dismantling the Velvet Coaster though, Page would actually reuse its lift hill for the new attraction. Just one year after Velvet Coaster's closure, the ride would make its debut. It would be simply named Roller Coaster and would serve as a tamer ride more suitable to families. In 2011, the coaster would be incorporated into the park's Nickelodeon Kids area. It would be renamed Nickelodeon Streak, sporting a vibrant orange paint job and green slime-colored trains. Meanwhile, the original Velvet Coaster's legacy lives on in a rather unexpected way. Just down the street from the park is a Weatherspoons pub named after the former attraction. This pub offers a wide array of craft beers and ales, as well as pub favorites like Fish and Chips and Eggs Benedict. Weatherspoons may be a common chain in the UK, but this one is definitely worth checking out. Number 4. Viper Station at New Jersey's Six Flags Great Adventure Recycled into El Toro Station at the same park. In the mid-1990s, Great Adventure wanted to spice up their ride lineup with a unique and exciting roller coaster. Their ambitions led them to Japanese manufacturer Togo. This company had previously manufactured the well-received Ultra Twister. In its space, Six Flags wanted a new Togo coaster that would better fit the park's needs. After viewing a prototype looping coaster at Togo's Ohio testing facility, Six Flags immediately purchased it. It was named Viper and would be themed to a snake in the Old West. To give it a more snake-like appearance, Six Flags executives requested that more steel rings be added to the track. Meanwhile, the station would be themed to an old Spanish mission, complete with a mock bell on top. There was also a maintenance building with the same architectural style as the station. This helped the ride serve as a fitting transition between the western and Spanish themed sections of the park's Frontier Adventures area. The theming was indeed well received, but the same couldn't be said about the ride itself. Viper would be given an overwhelmingly negative reception from the public. Guests hated the awkward pull-down shoulder restraints, as well as the rough and painful ride experience. And as if that weren't bad enough, the steel ring track had to be constantly rewelded due to being unable to handle the ride's forces. It would even be closed for maintenance for the entire 2001 season. By 2004, the coaster was widely hated by guests and barely operated. So that year, the decision was made to close it for good. Not too long after though, a far superior replacement would be put up. In 2006, the park would debut El Toro, an Intamin prefabricated wooden coaster. Themed to a Spanish bull, the mission station was reused and even given a couple of extra details. An image of a bullfight and the ride's logo were painted on, and it's almost impossible to tell it was reused. It blends in so well with the ride that many agree it looks far superior with the wood track than the old steel track. To this day, El Toro was widely considered to be the best wooden coaster on earth. You can say this vision visually impressive station has indeed received the great ride it deserves. Number 3. Big Bad Wolf's Footer is at Virginia's Busch Gardens Williamsburg, recycled into Verbolton's Footers at the same park. One of the most cherished defunct coasters of all time is undoubtedly Big Bad Wolf. This aerodynamic suspended coaster first premiered in 1984. Guests would sit under the track in cars that swung side to side. Big Bad Wolf would of course be themed to the classic fairy tale character of the same name. Guests would take on the role of the star canine, swooping through a mock Bavarian village at a swift and speedy pace. In the coaster's climax, the trains would approach the edge of a hill. The track would then take a deep dip downwards towards the Rhine River, before taking a quick turn to the left. The lateral force of this sudden turn would swing guests to the right, leading to an immensely thrilling ride moment. Even with the trim brake installed towards the bottom, the ride would still win the hearts of enthusiasts all over the world. Its drop and subsequent turn were considered to be the best parts of the layout. Sadly though, the bankruptcy of its manufacturer made getting spare parts a lot more challenging over time. Over the years, the forces of the ride would wear out the trains and track, and keeping it running became far beyond the park's resources. So in 2009, Busch Gardens announced the coaster's closure that year. After last rides were given, the wolf was swiftly dismantled, but it wouldn't be long before its replacement was constructed. In 2012, a new launched roller coaster named Verbolton would take the wolf's place. It would feature two launches, a drop track, and a final drop that paid direct honor to its predecessor. Verbolton would reuse the square concrete footers over the river to create a final turn that directly emulated the wolf's climax. Seeing the track dip and turn over the river gives a warm sense of nostalgia to longtime park fans, and though it's gone, the Big Bad Wolf will certainly not be forgotten. Number 2. Eurosat's Old Track at Germany's Europa Park Recycled into a Bench For almost 40 years, 
Europa Park has served as a fitting love letter to European culture. Its lands are themed to various European countries and contain a wide variety of attractions to enjoy. Run by the Mach family, this park is home to some of the most notable attractions by German manufacturer Mach Rides. Among the most iconic rides of the park is Eurosat, an enclosed family coaster inside a geodesic dome. Upon its original opening, this coaster was themed to space travel. Though its layout was relatively mild, the fact that it took place in the dark made it much more thrilling. For years, this ride would serve as the perfect rainy day activity and would be one of Europa Park's most popular attractions. After many years of its original space theme, park officials made the sudden decision to give it a complete makeover in 2017. The space theme would be replaced with a French cabaret theater theme based on the famous Can Can Dance. Its entrance would be rethemed to the famous Moulin Rouge windmill, fitting for its location in the park's French section. The new ride experience features colorful special effects and showpieces, as well as new Crimson Track. Construction crews actually took the top off the dome to put this new track in. As for the old track, the park had a rather creative way of reusing it. For Mock Ride's co-owner Michael Mock's 40th birthday, maintenance workers whipped up something truly special to celebrate. With some wood, metal, and a little elbow grease, a brand new bench was constructed from the old track on the first drop. That's certainly one way to turn trash into treasure. Though it was briefly on display at the park, the bench is now reportedly in the private possession of the Mock family. Still though, the fact that it was made just goes to show the warm-hearted workmanship of the fine folks at Europa Park. Number 1. The Incredible Hulk's Old Track at Florida's Islands of Adventure Recycled into the Ride's Entrance After the success of Universal Studios Orlando, park executives wanted to open a second gate. This new park named Islands of Adventure would be themed to literature. Among the park's many themed lands was Marvel Superhero Island. This area would bring Marvel Comics' many heroes and villains to life through various attractions. Its top rides would include a Doctor Doom-themed launch tower, an acclaimed Spider-Man 4D dark ride, and an enormous sit-down coaster by Swiss manufacturer B&M. This massive ride was appropriately themed to the Incredible Hulk, and its original station featured an animated pre-show telling the story of Bruce Banner. The layout would twist guests through a whopping seven inversions, including a zero-g roll, a vertical loop, and a truly beautiful cobra roll over the water. Its location near the entrance and its intimidating appearance made it an instant hit among park guests. Over the years though, the constant daily operation would take its toll on the ride's track. Plus, with the Marvel brand growing into a massive blockbuster property, the queue line would seem outdated in the industry. To address both of these concerns, Universal made the decision to close the coaster in 2015 for a major refurbishment. This rehab would close the ride for almost a year. This makeover would involve replacing a majority of the worn out faded track with new vibrant track. The queue line would additionally be updated with new effects, and finally, the ride was given a stunning new entrance to greet passengers. This entrance depicts a massive sculpture of the Hulk ripping the track apart. Believe it or not, the track featured is actually some of the old discarded track. It received a new paint job, and needless to say, this entrance looks fantastic. It's both eye-catching and well-fitting to a park as world-renowned as Islands of Adventure. Before we wrap things up, I just want to give a special shout-out to my new Patreon supporters. Verbal shout-outs start at the gold tier, so if you don't hear your name, it will be listed at the end of the video. Here is a special shout Shout out to Logan Wright. Thank you all so much. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching, everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.